Happy New Year. I'm Father Russ, and this is Street Talk, and I'm really glad to be back. I haven't seen you uh, through the holidays, and thank you for allowing me in your homes. Now pretty much across the state, not only here in New London, in our New London area, we go up all around the state, and I'm going to, uh, we've got a stellar season. Uh, okay, thank you to Dominic Cotton, my co-host that's sitting across from me. A stellar lineup coming up that's unbelievable. Uh, we're better than CNN and MSNBC and uh, Fox News, for crying out loud. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I'm really happy. Uh, you, you know, Dominic has brought me great gifts, uh, both sides of the aisle, okay, which we're really proud of that we've worked both sides of the aisle last year. We've had, we had a great season. Last year, we had real. We had second chance uh, go through for. We had the ABI stuff to, for the disability people and all you advocates that work for us out there that did tune into the show and see the show. We really appreciate uh, you know your your watching us and and are thankful for your support. And the most important thing you do is when you get up off that couch, hit that phone, call the governor for me, and tell him, hey, father said do this. Listen to them. <laughs> That's the best. And you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to uh, the guy, great governor. What's his name? Oh, Malloy. <laughs> Danny. I think, I think you call yeah. him Danny Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. But tonight I got a great guest. Okay, that's with me, sitting across from me from Bridgeport, yep. and that's State Representative Christopher for Rosario. Okay, I'm glad to have you on the show. Thank you, Father mm -hmm. Ross. I'm thank you, Dominic. Uh, Dominic, thank you for having me on, and I want to wish all your viewers a happy New Year. Uh, oh yeah, we want we 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 really uh, we're really. We really got a great year. We're going to start off. I'm, I'm glad you're the first person to start off our year, and and what we're doing and and. And it's important because uh, a lot of the stuff you're doing, you, you know, I did a little background check on, on all right. that, mm -hmm. and, you, you know, and, and, and see all the stuff that you're doing, great stuff in Bridgeport, okay? My key question, and we were talking about different stuff out there that we'll get to, but you know the water issue is really important to me because of economic development and a lot of people don't know we're going to be uh, here in New London seriously affected with the waterway and the dredging and all that stuff. And I know you know a little bit about that. So, uh, but before I get in that, sure. I want you to I want to introduce yourself to my audience so that they know who you are. We go up in different venues. Okay, sure. Uh, my name is Christopher Rosario. I'm the state representative of the 128th District in Bridgeport, which covers the east side and the hollow uh, section of Bridgeport. Uh, if you look at Bridgeport as a hand, we're right in the middle of the city. Uh, this is my first term. I just finished my first legislative session, and I'm really excited for the new session coming up. And uh, I'm looking forward to just talk about different issues. Uh, I know you want to segue into the water issues, mm -hmm. but I'm also uh, uh, very, uh, very familiar with housing matters, homeless matters, and uh, just oh, municipal, yeah. municipal, <laughs> municipal government. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we're uh, going to get into all that stuff. Been involved in municipal right. government for over ten years, right. and uh, yeah. I'm glad to be on the show. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we're going to we're going to get into that too. <laughs> I'm going to bang you on some of that. But the water issue, a lot of people don't know. Uh, okay, because we got the dredging in New York, and there's <clears throat> been a little, uh, you know controversy over what's going on and I did want to just you know lightly talk about that because people don't know how much of an economic impact that's going to have on us here in New London down your way and everything else like that a lot of people aren't re still not really aware of what that can bring to our communities sure yeah I think uh, the, the water issue uh, two there's a twofold issue right. here uh, one is the economic uh, uh, engine uh, that it provides, and also the, the resiliency. As you know, uh, we've had uh, storms, we had Storm Sandy, Storm Irene, so we have to make sure that uh, we're resilient and that we, we can sustain, uh, you know, some not, not too much damage when a storm hits so that we don't, won't get impacted when it comes to our economic engine. I know in Bridgeport, we have a really big project called Steel Point happening. So we're, we're kind of in our, our first and second phase of that issue. Uh, we had a Starbucks and a Chipotle open up, uh, and also Bass Pro Shops, which has opened up. And uh, we also have our second, our third and fourth phase, which are really closer to the water. 
so which would provide dredging, you know, uh, deep water port access, and, and really open up uh, the economic uh, development in the area. Which means? Which more jobs, more jobs. <laughs> I know, more see, jobs. there's a way I get yes, into these yes. things. People think I'm crazy. Yeah, jobs. And who's going to get those jobs? That's what my, my worry about is who's going to get those jobs? Well, one of the things that, uh, especially in Bridgeport, uh, that we've been working on, uh, especially with Bass Pro Shops and Chipotle and Starbucks, listen, we want to welcome them into our communities, but we also want them to be good neighbors. And uh, one of the things working with the East Side NRZ, our local neighborhood revitalization zone, is we invite Bass Pro into our meetings. We invite these, uh, these companies and say, hey, listen, we're here. We're part of the community. We're part of the fabric. We would like these jobs. Uh, one of the issues that we've had, especially, is the, when it comes to the construction. Because uh, yeah, when you're that's, when that's you're talking I'm worried about. when you're talking project labor agreements, that means it's union only, and it kind of boxes out the little guy unless they're going to do some subcontracting work. So uh, th there's still a lot of work to be done on the state level, on the local level, uh, and hopefully uh, w together with the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus, I know we've worked on some yes. legislation, right. and and I know in the, on the local level in Bridgeport, I know uh, they uh, the previous mayor, Mayor Finch, had a uh, small minority business office, and they. Primarily primarily dealt with a lot of issues, especially with school building uh, and, and, and things of that nature, projects of that nature, so that our small minority businesses can get access or buy, the, buy the that out. That, that's, really, that's really what my concern is, too, because as from the minority perspective, black and brown, uh, we got money for, for small businesses. I know there's a ton of money floating around someplace in, in our community for the development of those small businesses that can hook into these big projects. I know we have some union problems, and, and I, I, you know, I, I don't know if we legislatively can do anything about them. I like apprenticeship programs mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a, I'm a serious union guy. You know, I'm far, I'm far left on the Democratic yeah. side, about as far as you get, probably farther than Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, Teamster, I started as a young guy as a Teamster and um, AFL-CIO, all that stuff, AFSCME organizer and stuff like that. So I am really, I'm, I, I love my unions, but I don't like my unions when they're isolating uh, minorities that need to get into the workforce. Yeah, and so. I, I really think that, listen, there's going to be a lot of projects out there. You're right. Uh, the governor is talking about, uh, you know, billions of dollars coming mm -hmm. in for mm -hmm. transportation. Right. And, and there's going to be a, there's gonna be an area for project labor agreements and the unions. That's great. We want more union jobs. Uh, but with that said, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a way that they can, they can find a, a way to, to kind of get small, small and minority uh, businesses to become those big companies. Because uh, right. when, when you're working with ONGs of the world, you know, it's like almost like they're the only game in town. Exactly. Uh, and I can see, I, I really can see, I, I've seen it on a smaller level as the director of anti blight at City of Bridgeport. We've done, I've done a lot of work with small minority contractors, uh, demolitions, uh, house borders, remediation, lead, lead abatement. So, uh, and I've used primarily small minority businesses from Bridgeport and, and the surrounding area, and they can do the job. And I'm pretty sure that if given the opportunity, they can maybe one day expand to, to become a bigger outfit. I'm not going to give him any breaks. I'm going to segue right into transportation. Okay, you're talking about, I mean, I know that, that you're, you're right in a hot spot uh, that's going to, transportation happening down there. That's going to be a hub, isn't it? I tell you what, I'm on the transportation committee. And, uh, <laughs> there you, and, you know, know. The, 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 one, the, the one talk that I, I heard as soon as I got elected was tolls, tolls, tolls. But I think, um, you know, in my district is the proposed uh, Barnum Station, the new train mm -hmm. station. And that's right by the REM grid. If, you're, if anybody's familiar with the east side of Bridgeport, uh, it was a very uh, old uh, industrial section, part of mm -hmm. town, a lot of mm -hmm. factories. Right. Uh, and once the, um, that industry left, it kind of you know, left those brownfields behind. So uh, we, over the last past couple of years, I know we had some state monies from then Senator Ayala to uh, knock down the, the re old REM grid factory that where the, the footprint of that train station is going to mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. and there's another piece of that REM grid factory across the street. So when you look at that, that brings transit orient orientated uh, development, and 
opportunities for housing. Serious. Uh, I, I, yeah, right, right. That, that, that is a very, very serious. I've actually done work in, uh, Go ahead. when I, I worked for, uh, I did volunteer work for Habitat for Humanity over there when they were in the Remington Sark. Yes. Like, because we were right next to the shot tower, so I know how uh, dilapidated those those buildings are, and 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 really they were, you know, uh, arson's been through there. People have lit like fires, and it's really yeah. if they could do something with that, you know, it makes a big turnaround for that community. You know, it, when, when when you look at it beyond beyond the arson, you know, obviously it drags down property values, yep. right. but also the safety of our men and women. Uh, in the fire department right. mm -hmm. and in in uh, the police, I, I've been I've been to fires where you know they've they've had to drag out the hose and had syringes in on the hose yeah. on the hoses yeah. and we yeah. have to get rid of the sort of the, the hose. Yeah. So yeah. it poses a public safety hazard. So yeah. it's important that we we uh, get working on those. But the development with that train uh, station there is going to be huge. Oh well, yes, that, that's yeah. really going to take the east side uh, and really really develop it into a cornerstone, cornerstone of, of the right, city. Okay, right, exactly. Uh, if, if everything goes according to plan, uh, we would be able to have a Nacella stop in Bridgeport. Uh -huh. The reason why we don't have one in Bridgeport right now is because uh, our downtown train station, it's on a curve. Okay. So Nacella is not able to stop because of the high speed, so mm -hmm. it's a safety issue. That's why they only stop in New Haven and in Stanford down in our neck of the woods. Oh, okay. So uh, with that new train station, it would have the, uh, and I believe we have uh, agreements from Amtrak, that they will stop. You know, they will have a Nacella stop in Bridgeport, and I think that will be a game changer uh, to develop the rest of the east well, side. Well, and, and, and if you talk about developing and everything else like that and, and quality housing, uh, okay, you're drawing... Uh, you're drawing commuters right out of New York, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right there. I, 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 I mean, that, that could be a really a, a gem, right? And when you're talking about, you know, keeping the fabric of the neighborhood there, I think the, the number one fear is that you're plopping this train station down, and now I'm going to move out. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been on the east side for 30, 40 years. I've owned my home here. I'm comfortable here. Here comes the train station. I'm out of here. What this does, it gives people an opportunity. Uh, a majority, a lot of the folks that live in my district, many of them own one or you know one car, and many of them use mass print transportation. They work down county, they work in Norwalk, they work they work in Stanford. Now you can walk to the train station, you know. So now you're, not only is it you, you know you're walk to the train station, you're lowering your carbon footprint. Uh, maybe we'll get into green stuff later, but uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's definitely uh, something that will will help be a benefit to our our residents. Now I, I I think over in that over in that same area where Steel Point is, is isn't there supposed to be like a supermarket like uh, supposed to be going in that area? Yeah, too? I believe uh, it's on the uh, Cartex site, the old Carpenter Steel, which is I believe a few blocks down away from the Steel Point development. So there there are talks of a uh, some sort of supermarket. Uh, uh, complex and you know with other retail and, and, and entertainment so that's that's uh, another phase that's kind of a, a little further down the road but uh, it's it's in the works over there on the east side of Bridgeport and I know I know what he would what, what you were getting at with uh, with the whole uh, thing with the waterways is um, I know right right at the moment Arm, Army uh, Corps of Engineers is talking sure. about yeah dredging out because I remember uh, right. Chiquita Banana yeah, right, used right. to come right into oh, Bridgeport yeah. and I, I, I the director I, shipyard yeah yeah, okay. and, yeah and I think even uh, even the union union actually bought that whole area in there and used to run that all the longshoremen's yes you yes. used to run that themselves yeah. Yeah. yes yeah, I, I mean when you're going into an area like that and you're doing this kind of development you can kind of hold down gentrification if you educate your community into what is happening and what's coming. They can buy into that situation and, and, and you can improve your housing and the quality of life mm -hmm. and everything else, but you need to be led into what's going on rather than most places come in, boom, they're there, and, and your poor marginalized community is kind of thrown out because they didn't know you're coming, okay? They had no chance to you know, get themselves ready for the impact and understand what's going to happen when, if they stayed in that area, their children uh, 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 would have better opportunities, jobs, and everything else, rather than run away, okay, hang in there with the, with the development of these areas makes a big, it makes a big difference. And you can do a... Yeah, I, I, de I definitely want to... Uh, 
just dovetail on that. Uh, for one of the things that's happening on that all town uh, side of town also is the ferry is actually moving from downtown over to closer to Steel Point. So uh -huh. now there's more opportunity for folks on the east side, east end, to work at the ferry, commute at the ferry, right. and now those folks can. They, it's a closer shot, walking distance right, to right. go to Steel Point, to go to Bassboro, go to the shop, and and I, I really think that good urban economic development should come from the gra from the ground up. Yeah, you know, yeah. instead of saying, listen, we're going to drop a big box store down in your neighborhood. What are the needs there? What are the, what mm -hmm. are, do you need pharmacies? Do you need uh, do you need a supermarket? What what are the needs that the community has? And and, and just you know, let's not put a square peg in a round hole. So that's uh, that's what I believe is good. Well, I think economic the other part, nice part about that is is, you know, it brings people into Bridgeport because, I mean, if you ever go on the Bridgeport Ferry, everybody's going over to Port Jeff. Mm -hmm. You want to bring people into here. I mean, right. you've got Pleasure Beach right there. you got a water taxi that goes goes over to there. I mean, I went over there, uh, you know, in the fall just to go check it out, and I never realized how nice an area that that is that they have access to. And I don't, I don't think people realize that they're, what, what what's really in Bridgeport. I think, it, you know, you have to have like these, these, you know, like the Bass Pro, the Steel Point, and the other things, which pique people's interest to be able to say, "Wow, there's so much more here." You know, uh, Bridgeport, uh, it's a, it's a great city. I'm born and raised there, mm -hmm. and listen, we have, we have a zoo. You know, we have the Discovery yeah, it's, Museum. It's a, yeah, exactly. We have the arena. We have the ballpark. Uh, we've got Pleasure Beach. Uh -huh. uh, you've got Bass Pro now. I, I was just down there the other day. Uh, it's jam packed. There's a the parking lot's always full. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, you can either go shop. I know they have a restaurant. They have a bowling alley. Uh, it's always packed. There's always uh, people there, and, and there's people that would normally be. And I hate to do this to you, Dominic, but they, they would either go shop in Milford, <laughs> they go shop in Milford, or they go to trouble. But, right. but, but, but they're in Bridgeport. Let, 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 right? let me tell you, if you pull them out of Milford so I can actually make it down the roadway <laughs> and in Bridgeport, I would be more than happy. Yeah, so, 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 that's, so that's what's it's happening. Right. These are folks that would normally be, you know, uh, they would normally go to Shelton or uh, Orange or, you know, uh, Trumbull to go shop and dine. But they're in Bridgeport, and that's a well. Good thing. The part, part of it, part of it is, was, was we know, is there's a negative, the negative publicity that comes out of Bridgeport mm -hmm. uh, because of the crime factor that's involved down there, and, and and stuff like that. That's part of the problem, the, because you don't get the you don't get the positive side coming out of what's there, what's being developed, and everything else. Much like New London. You know, much like New London has been in the past, which is totally changing. You've got all the negative and stuff like that. So it's quality of leadership, and I know your leadership. Mm -hmm. You're a quality leader and stuff like that. You need all that in, in those kind of areas to develop your your situation. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, not to, to pick on the media, because I know our local media, they we have a, a, a News 12, and mm -hmm. they, do, they do a good, fair job of... Uh, Try and report the good, and also, you know, they have to report what's mm -hmm. happening. And right. you know, unfortunately, inner cities with the low-hanging fruit when it comes to the media. What do you want? What do you need to put up at six o'clock tonight? What's happening in Bridgeport? What's happening in Haven? What's happening in Hartford? Mm -hmm. uh, who got shot? Who got stabbed? Let's put it up on, you know, because it sells papers. You know, right. it sells papers. It it it, it gets it high ratings. It attracts people. It gets, right. it gets yeah. high ratings. Right. Uh, right. So uh, unfortunately, that's uh, you know, it's it's inner city life. It doesn't matter where you go in this country. You know, uh, we have our challenges, and uh, we have to work hard to, to, you know, highlight the good and, and, and combat the bad. And, 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 and we're talking about stuff like that. You, you've, as you said earlier, you've dealt with blight and how the community has to up, you know, get itself in a positive direct, uh, direction. Uh, uh, and how, how, how do you see? The furthering of the blight program down there is so, uh, where are we uh, with that? Well, you know, right now uh, the new administration uh, they made a change. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, I, I'm yeah. I, I'm I'm not at that position anymore. However, uh, I think that you know the the, the issue of quality of life uh, it goes beyond you know whether who's there or not. Uh, we as a community have to do a good job do a good job of making sure that you know we one of the big situations that we have is hoarding. You know, hoarding hoarding is something that it's, it's a disease. Yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. not it's not uh, you know your your normal slumlord. You hit them with a fine. You 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 take them to the housing court. You know, and, and at some point you get a resolution. Uh, but what happens is not only at the state level but the federal level. You know, folks that have diseases, 
whether it be hoarding, uh, drug addiction, mm -hmm. you know, we just keep cutting, cutting, cutting services. Right. And when they need more and more help. And exactly. uh, so, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that uh, we as legislators and leaders have to fight for those folks that have these problems, that they can't, they can't fend for themselves. Yeah. So we, one of the things that my mother told me, uh, uh, once, once uh, I got, actually it was a year ago today, that I got sworn in as a state representative. And uh, she says, once you take that oath and you sit down, you belong to everybody here. You belong, you're, you're the public. And you have to take care of everybody's issues, and uh, yeah, even the ones that gave you pain, mm -hmm. pain yes, in the butt, yes. right? Right. But guess what? You know what? We, right. You have family members that right. get pains in the butt. You got to deal with them anyway. You got to deal with them anyway. So, them anyways, so right? uh, you know, yeah, it, right. it is what it is. And uh, but uh, my main goal is to, to fight for those that are uh, that are less fortunate and uh, be their voice. And when we talk about that, one of the things about dealing with, because that's what I deal with, my, my majority of my life has been dealing with the poor, the marginalized, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, when I talk about the crime and the justice programs, you know, we're, gonna, we're emptying out, we're trying to empty out the prisons, and where are they going to go? Okay, they're going to go back to the community, and, and our, uh, our situation right now is what we're talking about, is we're talking about addictive individuals. Uh, we're talking about mental health, uh, okay, okay, that we have not dealt with properly. You know, we emptied out state hospitals and stuff like that. We were supposed to build an infrastructure for them. We didn't, so we put those all those poor people into prisons, and we, we want guards to be uh, mental health professionals, and they're not. Uh, okay, so now we've got all these people coming out. You know, uh, one of the things uh, I, I'm, I serve on the board of Alpha Community Services. They, uh, they're the largest provider for family emergency services in the city of Bridgeport. Uh, and one of the issues that we face is, like you said, whether it be uh, a displaced family because of a fire, a loss of a job, or, or whatever trauma, and, or somebody coming out of a, a prison. Uh, I don't like to say I, I don't like to say ex-offenders. I like to say returning citizens. So <laughs> that's what that's what I like to say. I don't I don't like to say ex-offenders. But uh, when you have returning citizens coming in, back into the community, you know, you, you're telling them, okay, you did your eight years, your five years, and they want to stick you in a four-week program or an eight-week program, and we're gonna fix everything, sprinkle some fairy dust, and you're on your own. It's just not reality. You know, you got folks that are coming out. They probably had some sort of drug dependency. They have mm -hmm. a child support issue. They have, probably have mental health issues. Uh, last time I checked, uh, when you're in a you know eight by ten cell, I don't think that's uh, you know you, you're gonna you're not gonna be uh, uh, the same. You know, mm -hmm. so so you, they're getting out of prison or you know wherever they come, whatever facility, and they have issues. They have needs, and unfortunately, you know the the services. Uh, aren't always there. Sometimes they're lacking, uh, but we have to, with especially those providers, those folks that are doing a good job. We have to support them. We have to make sure that they have the resources that they have and fight for more. That's what that's what we can do. I know you deal with the homeless issues. Uh, uh, you know, we 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 did a shelter here. We got a shelter. Uh, I'm not. Even though I have found shelters, I'm not a shelter person. I really believe that, uh, I, I've always believed that you give a person a home, an apartment, and stuff like that, that may be not able to take care of themselves, but we, if we could take care of them, you could inject the services uh, to us. Uh, New England didn't listen to us. Boston University did study years ago, and we know if you can put somebody in a house, a home, an apartment, and it's theirs, you solve almost a lot of the problem. Not a shelter. Shelter, forget the shelter. If you could get them in, into home, then you can interject all your services, whether it's uh, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, uh, addiction people, and stuff like that. Uh, they, they, they have their own cave. Now, we didn't, we didn't do that. They did it in Utah. They did it in Utah nine years ago, and they've almost solved their homeless problem. They gave people houses.
They gave mm -hmm. people apartments. They gave it to them. There you go, here's your keys, see you later, and everything else like that. And it works. And I, I, my problem is I don't understand why we don't do that. Well, you know, we, we in Bridgeport, actually part of Alpha Community Services, we do have housing. We have That's the Harrison Apartments, and we also have the Crescent Building, Crescent building. where we have those wraparound services. We have, we have uh, somebody who's going to make sure that you go to your doctor's appointments on time. We work with our federally qualified uh, health care centers, Optimus, Southwest, make sure you go into your appointments, make sure that you get tokens to get to those appointments, uh, you know, whatever social service needs, whether it be with your social security, the state. So they work with you. But the problem is we don't have enough. We just don't have enough. We know when we, we, we only have, you know, 300 slots, 300 apartments when we really need, you know, 15,000. So uh, that's the key, you know, we, we, if we just don't have enough. Which, which brings about the same issue you were talking about. You know, they did this back in the 80s when they closed all the, the mental health hospitals. Right. They let everybody go and they didn't have a place for them to be. And, and it really comes down to, you have to have the housing stock for them to be able to go into and, you know, not have this chronic situation occur. And now they're going to do the same yeah. thing with the prisons. <laughs> yes. You know that that and, was my and, segue, and, right? And, 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 and we're going to do the damn, yeah, same it's, damn thing. It's, it's the same we're issue. We're going to let all these poor prisoners out with no support or minimal support, support yeah. minimal support. Well, like you're saying, you know, we got a problem of 15,000 and we're going to handle, what, 500? Well, I, I, I do, I do want uh, to give the governor a shot on oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I do. Uh, <laughs> he, has, he has, been good. He has, yeah, he, he okay. has been good on housing, especially in Bridgeport. Right. So okay. I, I, can't, uh, no. I can't complain. I know. Uh, on, on, in our neck of the woods, he's been great with housing, great with Bridgeport, uh, to, so we can get the, the needed slots. But again, we, we could always, we always could use more, not only in Bridgeport, but in London, Hartford, and New Haven. Well, he knows, and and and, and I'm sure he's going to be watching. I'm show. pretty sure. He's, he's, <laughs> sure. Yeah, he's, right he's, he's taking a break uh, from he, being he, in he, Iowa. He, and he's going to come check he'll, us out. He'll see. He'll see this show somewhere along the line, <laughs> and 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 and. But we supported him. This was one of the first shows he did. His first run. And then uh, my, my show so was I'm one joining of the a good first. company. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Company. He didn't do it last time, though. He stayed uh, away we, from we, me. We tried. Uh, we, we tried. He yeah, stayed I hit him away up from like me. three or four different I'm going to try and get him <laughs> on this year, right? Right, right. But we tried. He said he was going to get around to us. But, uh, you, you, you know, he has been a leader. I mean, there's no question in the things he's done. He's, he's been a leader with Second Chance. He's been a leader on the gun issue. He's been a lead on housing. You're absolutely right. He has got out there, and and, and I, I have to, I have to uh, give him a salute. He's re he's really tried. But it's about money. A lot of this stuff is they say, well, you can't throw money at everything. But these are issues that you can't throw money at because that's really what we're talking about, right? Yes. I absolutely. mean, we're we're talking serious bucks, and and serious money that we could. And, and we could save money if, if, we, if we get these individuals that we keep in the community, we could save a lot of money then rather than have them locked up in a facility that can't take care of them. It's an investment. It's big a, it's investment. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big progressive investment when you have somebody in a stable home, mm -hmm. in a stable place that's, now they're contributing to society. Mm -hmm. Now they can find employment, they mm -hmm. can volunteer, they can do many other things to help you know, the state be a better place to be as opposed to being, you know, locked up. I, I, I'm going to tell you what I even say, and, 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 I, and I mean this, even if they're not contributing. As an ex-convict myself, even when I, was not, when I was not contributing, when I was in dire straits, when I was homeless, when I was up against the wall, I wanted to stay out. I wasn't committing crime. So I was still saving people money, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't contributing as I was trying to straighten my life out. So I mean, I mean that's the other thing. We're always saying, well, maybe you, some people can't contribute. They're, 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 they're not able to. But and especially when we get into the mental health. As it's, well, it's, that's it's, what the we other, it's the other end of the economic right. spectrum, too. I mean, I, I know we are talking about closing a lot of these facilities, but you know, it costs $50,000 to have somebody in, in, in one of these situations. In church, right. I mean, how much less would it be, you know, to provide uh, a lot of these services? Because a lot of, 
you know, a lot of these people are chronic. A lot of them are uh, uh, young adults who, who uh, really haven't, you know, had the brain development. Yeah. Uh, um, to, to, uh, and it's almost like you have to be able to nurse them to the point of getting to like 26 when all of a sudden this stuff like kind of clicks in. But, you know, I mean, these are all the, the, the programs that, you know, we could be investing in, which are a heck of a lot cheaper than having somebody go into that. So like, you know, having programs for, for, for teenagers to, to work, you know, to learn apprenticeships, uh, to, 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 to be able to be productive so that they, they go to that good good side of things instead of, you know, going going to the to the streets parts of things. But it's it is it is still there is still streets, you know, in Bridgeport I, I, and I and I know, you know, that's that's a difficult choice for people to make. And and it's you know, it's it it's heartbreaking to see that. But, you know, God. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's it's a situation where yeah, like you said, you, you have to nurse people. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's it's a marathon. It's it's a it's a long haul. It's not a sprint. No. So you got to you have to literally go with them step by step along the way to make sure that they're on that path to recovery of whatever it is they got going on. It's mentorship. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a real mentorship uh, long-term programmatic type of situation to be doing those type of things. And there's people who can do it that are good at it and, and everything else. And that's a lot of what's needed. Sometimes you have to carry, sometimes you have to hand carry people through the process. They're not able to go through it themselves. Uh, or they're afraid or, or, or whatever. And that, that's, that's the reality of life. Uh, and uh, I, I, I know one of, one of the things I, I was, because jobs are important, and I know that you deal with uh, um, some of the new ventures in, uh, 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 you know, solar and wind and stuff like that, which is an open opportunity for a lot of people for jobs. Yeah, you, you know, people say, well, you jump from one issue to the other. But the fact of the matter is, no, I don't. They're all interconnected. They're all interconnected. <laughs> they, people don't get it. They are all interconnected. Let me give you an example in Bridgeport how uh, the green the green economy. The green, green economy, yeah, green yeah economy, right. Green right. jobs and not only help people with mental health right. and addiction, but also uh, returning citizens. Yeah, uh, we have a uh, mattress recycling facility. So, uh, so now that it plays into <laughs> both ends with my background as blight, so right. now instead mm -hmm. of getting that mattress dumped out in the corner, now we're bringing them to the mattress facility we're stripping them of all their materials, using the old steel, mm -hmm. using the other, uh, you know, we're basically re recycling everything Recycles. from yeah, the mattresses. Exactly. So now we're cleaning up our streets, we're employing folks in our community, and you know, we're providing jobs. Yeah. And, and that's part of the green economy. That's what we were doing in Bridgeport. We're doing in Bridgeport with a, we, we have a fuel cell, you know, we have solar on, on our solar dump, we have an eco technology park on uh, natural gas, you know, uh, natural gas pumping stations. And these are all, they're not going anywhere. They're not going to China. No, no, they're, no, they're, staying, they're, they're, staying, they're staying right they're, here. They're in the west side yeah, and exactly the east side right. of Bridgeport. Yeah. And we're hiring folks from the east side and west side of Bridgeport. Exactly. So, and those jobs aren't going anywhere. And, right. and I think, uh, you know, the Mayor Finch was, I think, ahead of his time uh, when it came to those green, that green mm -hmm. economy, that green technology. Uh, and I think maybe down the road, maybe 10, 15 years down the road, you're going to be like, wow. Uh, other cities and towns are going to wish that they were doing what we were doing then. Well, I know one of, one of the other big uh, projects that you, you were talking about that could give companies a competitive advantage is, uh, is the thermal loop. Oh, which my goodness, I, yeah. I know, I know, like, all of, all of you guys got together to, to, to help that with legislation. Listen, the, the thermal loop is something. Talk about cutting edge. Uh, uh, Europe, they've been doing this in Europe uh, for, I guess, a generation now. Uh, if you're from anybody's familiar with Bridgeport, you have the real liberator plant, so they burn off steam, you know, from the incinerator. So the concept is we're going to take um, a thermal loop, basically heated coils, uh, around our downtown area, and we're going to take that steam that's rising up out of the air from the uh, incinerator plant mm -hmm. and use it to heat our buildings downtown, which would include, you know, all of our, you know, the People's Bank building, the arena. Uh, the university, who's a tonic, UB, you know, so now that gives us an economic, uh, you know, competitive advantage Compa when it comes to, when advantage. it comes to office leasing right, space, right. you know what, yeah. maybe you can go to Stanford, you can go to Norwalk, 
Or you know what? We're gonna save you some time. First of all, on the commute because you don't have to go to Stanford. We're gonna save you some time of, com of commuting, but also of your um, your monthly rent uh, of square footage. Yeah, right. For for uh, if you want to move your business down to Bridgeport. So I think that's something the delegation really fought hard for. I want to give credit to our speaker, uh, mm -hmm. Brendan Sharkey, Sharky. and also yep. our majority leader. Joe, uh, we call him A to Z. Yeah. Joe, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Arizonawitz, uh, and, and, and both of their staff. So they really worked hand in hand with us, with the delegation and, and the Senate and the, and the governor's office to really get that get that off the ground. So now, when 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 is when is that going to? Well, right now they're they're it's, it's I want to say it's about eighty percent done. We've done our end on the state. Right. So right now there's some some contracts and things that need to be signed on the local level. Uh, they, they, they hit a couple snags, but we're we're confident, we're hopeful that that uh, they'll get things. Uh, this done. is huge. Yeah, like yeah. I said, it's it's competitive advantage. Y you know, Donald so, Trump. I sound <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> I, I mean, I think you know when you're talking about train stations, you're talking about downtown. You you know you you you're it's it's like you have to start from somewhere. You have like this big thing that comes and it, and it, and it you know, cascades inward to the rest of the city. So the more of these things how do that they you can capture, get. How do they capture this steam? I have to be like a kid. How do they capture the steam? It's a, it's, it's a, the, matter of fact, if you want, I'll get you the guy's information. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah, you yeah. can have him as a guest <laughs> and they'll explain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a concept that they've been doing in Europe. And, and, yeah, I, and I, I know, you know yeah, I know yeah. that once we do it in Bridgeport, you're right. going to start seeing other uh, cities and towns, especially in all over the country, that have our situation. We're an old right. industrial city. Right, right, right. That, uh, you know, definitely like a Waterbury. No, I know. Yeah. I, I, I didn't yeah. mean to get you. I, I've heard of it and everything else like that. And it's been a thing. I'm, I'm, I, you know, my head goes like, okay, you, you, you know, how do, they, how do they capture this stuff? Which is, you know, yeah. kind of just stupid stuff. <laughs> That's okay. They got they got a lot of cool stuff going on in Bridgeport uh, oh, right I now. Wish they got they, they, they have Route Eight. They're replacing. They're actually taking bridges that they're going to be replacing, and they're 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 building them off to the side, yeah. uh, and completing the whole structure. So that they can, just, they can just like, yeah. they can just, they can just pop it like pop into it place. Pop it into place, yeah. I, like I, with like a big huge I, crane, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, I guess yeah. it's supposed to save like a couple of years worth of, of construction going up Route Eight. That's uh, that's in my actually that's in my district. That the entire that stretch, is that that, that stretch is in, stretch is in my district. It's called ABC Construction. So what they're doing is they're uh, they're they're going off of Route Five, uh, Exit Five, building stretches of the uh, yep. of, of the bridge there. And overnight, plopping them in, plopping them out. I believe it was a thirty-five million dollar project. We uh, we we voted on that uh, this past That's legislative amazing. session. So it's a it's an interesting uh, uh, process, and uh, they it's on. They have a, they have a website. It's like yeah. Rich Bridgeport Construction or something. Like that. I, I'm like, well, I mean, I drive by that every day. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this is like one of the coolest things. Like watching that. Now I know. We were talk, talking about uh, roadways and stuff. You, you you have like the the, the restamping machine too. Yes, hot in place. Hot yes, in place. hot in place. It's uh, it's not your traditional mill and fill. Uh, now we're now we're talking roadway. We're talking works. roadways. This yeah, is, yeah, this is this is roadway nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we're <laughs> taking. We have a machine that well, that's pretty much uh, we 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 grind up. You know, we, it's like we mill. We mill right. the street, uh, recycle the millings, and flatten it out, heat it up, and. And we, we literally do hundreds of feet of uh, paving in hours. And, uh, Not like say, the old days, it would take days. We're no, talking, no. no we're, we're talking about, you know, we, we, we can have a whole section of the city done in, in a week instead of, a, instead of one or two streets. That's, well, that, that's seriously amazing because that, we're talking infrastructure now. When we're talking bridges, we're talking infrastructure. When we're talking roads, we're talking infrastructure. And we've got a country that's falling apart that hasn't been rebuilt in mm -hmm. uh, 75 years, okay? At least from World War II on, I, I, okay? So we got e everything's falling apart. Our streets are falling apart. Our bridges are falling apart and everything else. And they, all of these things need to be rebuilt and they need to be, we got to try and do it in a cost-effective way even though it's going to be a huge amount of money, but it still needs to be done, and it's jobs. Well, one of the things that, you know, being, being involved in, in municipal government for over 10 years and now 
you know, being uh, at the state level. And one of the things that we can learn from cities and towns, cities and towns, they're innovative, they're creative. Uh, mm -hmm. The rubber, that's where the rubber meets the road. You can't blame the federal government, you can't blame the state. The, the, you know, it's, it's right there. It's right there. It's and and yeah. when you talk about ways of, uh, you know, saving money, uh, you know, doing more with less, cities have it down, uh, down to a science. And I think uh, the, the state can learn from cities. And well, yeah, that's yeah. my front door. That's my sidewalk. That's, uh, you, you know, that's how I got to go to work. That's how I got, uh, okay, that's where it starts. Boom. Uh, you know, and, and that knowledge that, that, well, that's what makes you good leadership at the state level, that you've had that background, uh, okay, and you, and you know what it takes. Also, also in the community. I mean, we're always imposing stuff on communities. We do, you know, that top-down bull crap, which is, now, okay, you talk just like I, I talk. It's, mm -hmm. it's bottom-up, mm -hmm. uh, okay? Self-determination is bottom-up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we do it with prisoners and stuff like that. When we talk change, we talk change bottom-up. It starts with the individual, not the... Uh, we do disability. Who is it supposed to be start with? It's all person centered. It's supposed to be person centered. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, this is a whole learning process that some people don't get. You've got to start where the problems exist, and you know, rather than have somebody imposing stuff that doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. You know, especially when when you talk about grassroots community uh, issues. The pothole doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. You know? No, you don't you're, care you're, who you're, you are, you're, right? Your snow, mm -hmm. your your street hasn't gotten plowed. Doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. Those are just normal constituent issues, and right. that's what it all boils down to. If you, you pay attention to those details, uh, one of the things I love working with uh, NRZs uh, in Bridgeport. We have the neighborhood revitalization zones. <laughs> my district, uh, my state rep district, we have we have two of them: the Hollow and the East Side. But I've dealt with all of them citywide, and that's where you're hearing from, you know, uh, folks that in, in the hollow NRZ, we have one lady who lives in my district that works at GE, another lady uh, who's, you know, a cashier at the bank. These are your everyday folks that they just want, they just want their street uh, cleaned. Yeah. They want mm -hmm. that abandoned house next door boarded up. Right. Simple things. And that's what I really enjoy uh, about government and uh, just really being, being a servant. Yeah. And, and giving back to my community, and uh, uh, it's one of the joys. And I, I really highly recommend any community who doesn't have an NRZ to get one. So that's uh, definitely a, a grassroots way to get involved with government. NRZ, neighborhood, neighborhood revitalization, revitalization zones. zone. Right. I believe I, I I believe we have them in New London. Uh, oh, oh, something similar to them. Uh, okay, and and that yeah that that's that's a great thing, and again it's grassroots. It's right from the right from the grassroots. Uh, boy, I really banged on uh, uh, Christopher. Well, that's that's I, okay. I, I, I wanted to hit on some I, I, I some of some of I guess some ahead. of the brownfield. I, I, got, I got most of my stuff that I. <laughs> I some of the brownfield I, development. I, I know um, one of the big things that happened, obviously, I, I think it was, was the old GE buildings. Was that in your your area? Yes. Uh, it's a, it's right on the border, border. but uh, uh, I'm familiar, very familiar with the area. I guess the, is is there anything that's that, that's that's happening with that, or are they talking about it? I think they were talking about moving the high school over there. Well, or, or this this is what's happening uh, over the course of the last couple of years. Uh, I think it was mostly some of it political. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they, they were making you know an issue about the whole brownfield situation, but as many of you know, you know the the, the, the brownfield. Uh, uh, the strict uh, Connecticut, there's some of the strictest in, in the nation when it comes to if you're going to build on a brownfield as far as what the standards are of mm -hmm. uh, cleaning, uh, uh, what you can put there, especially if it's going to be a residential or commercial sure. or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, and from my understanding, uh, everything's above board uh, with the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection as far as mm -hmm. uh, uh, building a school there. I think the issue was the original plans called for 750 students, but I, I don't. It, it was too small, so I think uh, they made some changes with the plans, and now it's going to accommodate about 1,200 students. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I know we did a we did a uh, a groundbreaking over the summer. Really? Yeah. So there was a groundbreaking over the summer. Uh, now the issue, I guess, there was some the, the 
construction manager company that was in charge of building the school mm -hmm. with the change of administration. I'm not sure if they're going to be kept on. Uh, so there may be a delay just because of the new administration coming in. Maybe they want to change whoever's doing that job. So. Uh, well, I mean, things change around, obviously, you know. Uh, I mean, Bill Finch did a great job with a lot of, a lot of different things, and we got a new administration down there, and obviously they, they got to put their handprints on uh, all the difference or get caught up to speed with, with all the different projects. Like I said, uh, Yeah, you I know. won't say anything about the <laughs> even though he, even though he's a brother and graduated out of the well, same academy, well, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll say this much: we, you know what? He, he like we were talking about, he did grassroots. Apparently, he did he, grassroots. He, he, he went he, door he really to door did grassroots, and stuff, you know? and, uh, and they forgave him. And he'll be, he better be praying because I'm sure the police will be watching him. Well, listen, I, 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 I yeah. really think he did, he did a great job of, uh, you know, like you said, an old school grassroots. Mm -hmm. Uh, knocking on doors, uh, wearing out pairs of shoes type of... Type oh, oh of yeah. Well, I can't say, well, you, you know, we, we, we had people on and we were talking about uh, his, his, his run for, uh, for, the, for the mayor and he's out of a job and stuff like that. But, you, you know, I'm a Massachusetts boy, you know. We ran, we ran uh, politicians <laughs> from the joint. <laughs> and, and uh, you, you know, so, you, you know, if he does the job, uh, and that's what it's all about. To me, it's if you do the job. I'm, I, I'm a teamster. I'm probably one of the oldest teams. I'm a retired teamster, okay? And I'm probably one of the oldest in the country now. But I love Jimmy Hoffa. I didn't care how much he stole because he took care of me. <laughs> I, I hate to say that, but that's the truth. He took care of me. He took care of his truck drivers. He took care of the, you, you know, and that's what you're looking for as a politician who's going to take care of his constituency. Now, things have changed a lot in my day, okay? It used to be, you know, you supported your local politician. He was the person you went to for the job. I mean, I grew up under the old way, you know? Uh, you supported him. They supported you. If there was work, they were going to find you a place uh, and, and stuff like that. The, it's not quite the same anymore. Uh, and, and everything, but it's still, it, it's still depending on where you are, you, you know. And uh, well, I you think know. One, one of the big things he did, you know, what he connected up with people, and he, and and it was that whole part of things that you know, yeah, we 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 have felonies, or you know, we have situations that really prevent us from you know being able to fully be a part of society. I know you you were running a a, a, wor a workshop or were involved with a workshop helping with uh, with people yes. to get some of their uh yes one, records one, erased one of the Be, things uh, i i've been uh, the Corey. Uh, 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 yeah the, uh, the you, Connecticut pardon you, team, you, pardon team right? yeah so you yeah. Call, you call it be in the box right yeah be in the box be actually the box. one of the right. first which things which is uh, great when i first got involved in uh when i was a mayoral aide for mayor finch back right. in 2008 uh, one of the, we were the second city in the state to, to ban the box on a, a municipal application. Uh -huh. I've done uh, extensive work with the family reentry in Bridgeport, Project Longevity. Uh, so, uh, well, that, 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 that's a killer. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, for you know, somebody after 30 years was trying to get me uh, for, out of my job because of my background, right? So, so, yes. so you, so <laughs> you're well aware of that one, right? Uh, okay, 30 years. Okay, been in, been in the business and everything else because of my past. They were, they were looking to try to, to try to uh, uh, get me out of my, my job. Uh, and the Corey situation, my guys have. Well, in Massachusetts, well, I think we were one of the first to start on that, uh, countrywide, to try and say, "Hey, pal, we paid our, we've done our time. We've done, you, you know, how long are you going to, you know, keep us in a life sentence? Because, because every felony, most people don't realize, every felony is a life sentence, whether you go to prison or you don't, because it puts you out of all these opportunities that you need in life to get a job." And character situations and everything else, you know, and that's too bad. Hey, listen, it's a it's a, it's a scarlet letter. And it is. It, it's, it's, it is the you, It's you, tough, you know, and especially when you're when dealing with my communities, uh, you know, black and brown. You know, it's a uh, forget doing with two two strikes. You know, you're you're you're, you're already done. got three strikes. You got you're three done. strikes. You're up. You're done. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. So yeah, you're, exactly. you're relegated yeah. to a life on the streets. You're right. Or spending the rest of your life in prison and. Uh, uh, it's something that us as uh, as leaders and legislators we have to we have to fight hard to to, to make things right. Yeah. 
I can't believe three minutes. We got to have we got to have Chris back on. Chris, Chris is our new Bridgeport representative <laughs> in Street Talk. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, you yeah. didn't realize how long I've been recruiting you for. We've we, we got to get his back on. Look, but, but before we, we got that, I want to, we, we have a Stella, and that's the way, the Stella lineup coming up next week. Who we got? Brandon McGee. Brandon McGee. Yeah, from Hartford. Hartford. Eric, Eric, Eric Coleman. Eric, Senator Coleman's the coming Senator. up. That's, that's my man. Head of the judiciary. That, that's my yep. man. I, I love, I love, I love Senator Coleman. I mean, he's great. He's yeah, the man. Yeah. I, 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 Eric, God bless <laughs> you, Senator. Man. You're the man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I really do. I love him. I've known him a long time. And then we have Dude, we have Robin Porter coming. Then we back got on. Robin Porter back on, right? We got yep. that, right. Yep. Then Su we we Susan got Campbell. Su Susan Campbell, noted author, yep. uh, journalist. Uh, then we got Paul. It's, once we got Paul, the Senator Paul. I, I, have, I haven't yeah, gone I haven't that got, far. You told okay, me not to okay. go too, too far. Yeah, not to go so. too, too far. Okay, okay. He, but he's supposed to be in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll get, so we got some we other have, ones coming got, on this yeah, season. Yeah, we got a serious. Ka Kathy Osten's probably going to come oh, back Santa, on oh, here. I, I love Kathy. You know, we got to yeah. get, get Michael back on And we got to get here. Mike. Okay, you got to get Mike back on. Yep. Okay. I I had a great night. And I am so yes. happy that uh, you've. Uh, yeah, I, I already there. know what kind of stand-up guy this is. So oh, thank you, you so know much. what? I appreciate it. Thank uh, you for the opportunity. Do you want to say anything? You got about a minute and a half to say anything to your constituency out there, because this will be shown in your area. Yeah. Well, I, I, first of all, I want to say today is the the one-year anniversary of me uh, getting sworn in as your state representative, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, I look uh, forward to fighting for you this next coming. Uh, legislative session and I'll be making my intentions uh, known soon as to what I'm going to do uh, this uh, this summer and fall uh, re-election re wise so stay tuned and God bless you all. And I want to yeah. tell you I want to make sure you got great leadership I know believe me okay anybody that's on this show we do research we know them up and down <laughs> they come in there and they say how do you know this father? <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we know all about them and, and, and We've had quality people, quality leadership. I, we had a unbelievable leader here last year, and we're starting out right. Dominic, good night. Thank people you, out there, pray for me. I'll pray for you. We love you. Good night.